When I was 13 years old, my brother gave me a copy of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and told me to read it. I was more of a climb trees, play sports, be sweaty and grass stained kid than a sit still for more than 30 minutes and read stuff kid, but it was short so I gave it a go. Now this was the first time I'd ever seen religion treated with such brazen mockery. I was already doubting the conflicting messages from my Mormon dad and my Catholic mom, but when I read The Hitchhiker's Guide I realized that it was okay to just call bullshit on all of it. After all, this dude wasn't getting struck by lightning or brimstone, and he certainly didn't seem to be too worried about going to hell, so why should I be? And there's a question that Adams poses in this book that's been stuck in my craw for two dozen years. Just who is this God person anyway? You'd think that in 5,000 years of trying, the Abrahamic faiths would have come up with a concise definition, or if not concise, at least a consistent one. But as we all know, if you ask 20 Christians to define God, you'll get 20 different definitions. Sure, you'll get a few commonalities, but it'll be pretty clear pretty quickly that all these Christians are worshipping a different guy. And none of them, none of the Christians, none of the Jews, and none of the Muslims are worshipping the guy from the Bible. The all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, moral, caring, forgiving, judicious, benevolent dude they talk about might make a cameo at some point, but he's nowhere to be found in the first four books. What's worse, the guys who wrote the first four books of the Bible, or more precisely, the guys who wrote the unrelated independent sources that would later be woven together to become the first four books of the Bible, also weren't working with a coherent definition. Is God the dude that shows up in the Garden of Eden in Genesis, or is he the guy that nobody can survive seeing from Exodus? Or is he the disembodied spirit they talk about in the Gospels? Is he the all-knowing guy from Jeremiah and Acts, or is he the bumbling idiot from Genesis and Numbers? Is he the hard-to-anger guy they sing about in Exodus, or is he the unjust, wrathful bully that was killing people for no reason right before they started singing about it? And if he's all-powerful, why does he need Moses to do everything? If he's all-loving, why is he such an asshole to virtually everyone he encounters? If he's all-knowing, why do people have to keep reminding him of shit? If he's moral, why does he champion slavery? If he's caring, why does Moses have to keep talking about killing people? If he's forgiving, why does he punish kids for their parents' crime? If he's judicious, why can't I find any Amalekites around these days? And if he's benevolent, why does he have so much fucking blood on his hands? Of course, these Christians that are so quick to define God don't know what the Bible says because they've never read it. If you press them, they'll often claim that they've read most of it, but then you start quizzing them and it turns out that they don't know there's a talking donkey in the fourth book. How much could you have possibly read? That's the fourth book. That's like saying I've seen most of the movie, but I missed the parts after the opening credits. If I believed a book to be inspired by the all-knowing creator of the universe, let alone directly revealed by him, I'd know the damn thing by heart. But these dingbats, even the literal words of the Bible, guys, can't be bothered to crack it open. And I don't think it's because they're too lazy either. I'm willing to bet that many, if not most of them, started it at some point. And I don't think they turned away because of the genealogies or the archaic language or the repetition or the bulk. I think they met their God and he scared the fuck out of them. I think they turned away because they started to realize that the more they knew about their religion, the harder it was going to be to believe.